I can't, I can't help that I'm moving this. You people with this car, it's every time. I'm going like seven miles an hour on the highway. All of a sudden I see the headlights, I see the little fog light out the window and I freak out. So I go back down to the speed limit only for you to pass me laughing at me in your straight pipe yeah. cop car. Ladies and gentlemen, there's a car I love to hate but also kind of love to drive. A car that's probably one of the weirder ones in our series. But if you're on a budget, a car like this really can't be beat. I'm Alex Martini and today we're talking about how to modify a Ford Crown Victoria. Car Bart's Magikar Martini Works, where you're working with us to get you the right parts for your car. Not big corporate phonies that push shitty stuff just because it makes them more money. Plus, we've got 0% financing nowadays, and we got new products on the website, and we're growing every single week with, like, new stuff. That's a kind of okay sales pitch, but I will say the most recent brand we added was Veltronic Exhaust for all of our BMW boys, but we ain't talking about European cars, okay? We're talking about the car that gives me panic attacks more than the Ford Explorer, okay? The Ford Crown Victoria is an old girl, okay? Kind of like Tommy Lee Jones. It's aged, and you're not sure how old they actually are. This body-on-frame beauty carried so many bad people to jail and so many grandmas to church from 1992 to 2011. With over a billion of these things coming out of the factory pretty much, it seemed to go through the names of like things like the Ford Crown Victoria Police Interceptor, the Mercury Grand Marquis, the Mercury Marauder, the Lincoln Town Car, my greatest arch nemesis on the street, okay? This car has been in multiple generations, different body types, different things, different models, different makes. Ford just loves to use the same thing and just add a little more or less salt and you get different variations of the same goddamn car. The motherfucker's spitting. <laughs> Literally, they spit on the ground. The Ford Crown Vic, the official car for people who film inside post offices just to piss people off. Okay, it was a heavily supported car, but the only thing we care about with this two-ton Bertha is the fact that it came with a 4.6 liter modular V8. Why does that matter? Because the old ones had 210 horsepower and 270 foot-pounds of torque, with it slowly getting bumped all the way up to 250 horsepower in 2004 and 297 foot-pounds of torque by the end of it, which really is not that bad. No, I'm not going to say that this is a good looking car. It'd be like me telling you that I enjoy children screaming in my ear because they're just kids. They are, but they aren't mine, so I don't like them. Get them away from me, please. The 4.6 liter isn't crazy by any means either. Just because it's a V8 don't mean it's any good, okay? You got like a two-speed radiator fan, a coil-on plug system, some new cylinder heads came in like 2001 and only came in a four-speed automatic. But the good stuff started to come in 2003 when the car got gave us a better chassis. It increased the rigidity by 25%. It got a fancy rack and pinion power steering, cleaning up that sloppy steering feeling. The suspension got all cleaned up. You got aluminum front lower control arms, new steering knuckles, a twin tube shock system. You got ABS as standard, a new exhaust that didn't fall off. And honestly, the 2005 Crown Vic is the closest definition to an American sleeper if you're on a budget, which we all are because money's not real. So do you want something different? Do you want to scare the shit out of everyone around you? Well, look no further because this $2,500 car that's for sale literally anywhere in the entire continent can get you in more trouble than that one friend who's a triple senior in high school. I don't even know how those people have made it into adulthood. But we're still going to tell you how to modify it because this car is quite literally fun as hell. There's a reason Cletus McFarlane owns like 160 of these. Yes, they're cheap, they're also a blast. The Ford Crown Victoria, the official car for boys who love the bench seats, you know what I'm saying? The Ford Crown Victoria is a real wheel drive platform as well. It still is nearly two tons even with the newer ones, but it's pure American beauty, okay? The live rear axle made it fun to drive, and the fact that many of these cars can last over 200,000 miles with little servicing needs makes it an easy car to pick up. But if you put one of these things on air, you look absolutely Menacing. Gels knows all about this. These cars are ridiculous, so modifying them to match is actually a lot of fun. You can go into like the cool cop car look, or you can go into the dear god, it's a fat off road Miata look. Either way, both bangers. But start simple. Get a K9 engineering intake kit for like $350. Slap a MagnaFlow full exhaust on it for like $1,100. Now, for me, you can get a coilover kit for like $2,000, or you can just come over to Martini Works where we just love to add just a touch of like non-functional shit to cars, which in this case would be something like an Airlift 3P performance kit, which is gonna be like three grand. But don't worry if you don't wanna spend that much money on a car that costs $1,500, you can probably just find some lowering springs for a few hundred bucks for it too. But it just looks good dumped on the ground. For tunes, I've noticed SCT is one of the most common ones here, and I actually, 
there's there's really no other ones I could find out there on the website. There's a few on the forum that look exactly how you think a Crown Vic forum would look like. The, 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 the <laughs> It's, there's, there's, it's a tough crowd, okay? I would say most people also change over to the 410 gears with a 3200 converter, as well to give it just a bit more fun with the power band that you're going to have. You can go into sway bars. I know a lot of people jump into SPC camber bolts and have a good cleanup on any bushings, and that will make this car an actual treat to drive. But be warned, you're about to jump into the V8 for $3,000 crowd. And as much as I want to be Cletus McFarlane, I feel like you're closer to accidentally turning into, I don't know, black underscore underscore chrome on the crown vic forum who very proudly states he owns seven of these and you'll have a never-ending itch to buy another one because it's 700 dollars and it's got a good motor here's why i think the crown vic is a dime though it's a v8 and you can buy them for 1500 dollars. you can get a 2010 plus and you've got something that will survive quite literally a nuclear explosion and insurance won't second guess anything you do to this car slam it on the ground and clean up the paint and you'll have something nearly everyone will stop to look at regardless if it's your 17 year old car enthusiast your grandpa or the sheriff that pulled you over the modifications of this car is limited and while you can manual swap it and you can supercharge it if you really want to one costs seven thousand dollars and the other costs seventy one hundred dollars for a known kit which in this world is 3.2 crown vix and i would never make that trade instead get some good wheels and tires something like some american torque thrust will never do you wrong and we got those otherwise simple five spokes look absolutely awesome on this car get some conti tires so you can drive this thing in the wet dry snow war rain or in the apocalypse and if you're feeling fruity get a big old brush bar on the front and clean up those brick headlights and you are absolutely set but don't think for a second these cars can't do wicked things on the autocross course i've seen tons of these actually outperform a ton of real wheel drive sports cars with the right suspension intake and exhaust you've got a super fun car that is as weird as it probably sounds is a cheaper miata with a hard top and although it's a bit full fat more than the competitor it also does weigh more these cars can be a ton of fun to drive so how do you modify a cop car easy baby you grab 1500 $100 and prepare to scare the ever-living daylights out of anyone on the road after the sun goes down and smile at the fact that you've got a 4.6 liter V8 bolted to a four-speed transmission that's automatic, which after 2005 is actually kind of dope and fast, but it'll sound like crap. So you'll want to get a cannon intake, Borla exhaust, and at least three to four stickers that make it look like you're a cop. Because remember, it's only impersonating a cop if you get caught. Don't do this. The world of more power doesn't really exist unless you supercharge it for $7,000 or tune it for $500. But in the world of Crown Vicks, it's not dollars that's the currency, it's more Crown Vicks. And at 4.6 Crown Vicks for a supercharger, that ain't a good deal. So instead, you'll just need to be more careful that you don't become a hoarder, which almost seems like a requirement to own a Ford Crown Vic. But eventually, you might grow out a mullet, get an American flag for the back window, and strap a 100 shot of nitrous to it so you will undoubtedly have the most fun you can possibly have with the car for under five thousand dollars just get your car parts from martini works because honestly that's the most important thing but what do you think about crown vix and if you own one drop one of the top tips you wish you knew before you jumped into it and if you have one go add it to the build threads over at martini works i'm alex martini we hope you enjoyed this video let us know which car we should talk about next we'll see you on the next one